News around the cannabis industry and another company in Ted Ohashi's model portfolio here on Investors Hub Market Vision. Hi, I'm Andrew with Investors Hub, and today we're going to be talking with Ted Ohashi. He's a uh, regular person on the show here, and he writes the Cannabis Report for Investors Hub. And in the Cannabis Report, he has a model cannabis portfolio. And so with him today, we're going to talk about some news relating to the cannabis world. We're also going to talk about Chiron. Some news came out that's going to affect them. And we're also going to be talking about Lexaria Biosciences because we're trying to touch on a new company in his model portfolio every week and why that company is in his portfolio. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the channel grow. And without further delay, let's talk to Ted. So the House passed the Moore Act to decriminalize cannabis. Is there any hope of that act going through uh, without the Senate flipping? No, probably not. Um, the the um, Georgia seats uh, that are being voted on on January the 5th, I believe, um, need to go Democrat for that legislation to pass. And even then, it, it depends on no Democrats voting against. So um, it, it's pretty tough unless something like that happens. Uh, so it's a little bit more symbolic, but it shows you that the movement toward legalization uh, and decriminalization is still alive and uh, doing well in the U.S. So how would the decriminalization of cannabis in the U.S. affect the legal cannabis industry since something being decriminalized isn't technically making it legal? Yes, that's right. Um, what, what it would really do is it would prevent uh, new people from being charged criminally. Um, and it would also allow uh, people that have been charged and maybe even serving prison terms <clears throat> to have their records cleared. Um, and so it, it makes a difference, but you're right. It, it's not legalization. Um, and so that would have to be yet another step after this. So the UN reduced the scheduling of marijuana. It's no longer in the same category as heroin. Uh, do you think that countries will use this UN change as precedent to make laws in their own countries? Or is this uh, movement largely symbolic and, and won't have a big effect? Uh, well, the, the latter statement is mostly correct. Um, I remember when uh, Canada was legalizing, there were people that stood up and said, hey, we're a party to this UN drug agreement. Um, we can't legalize. And so um, it, it might help a little bit, but it's, but it's mainly symbolic. Uh, none of the members of the UN are bound by uh, that treaty. So we chatted about Chiron during our first interview that we had last month. And uh, you're saying that there's some new information or new news that will affect them? Yeah, the, the government of Colombia approved medical cannabis uh, for their national health program. And their national health program covers like 94% of the people of Colombia. Um, and so this is a, a big step forward um, in that country. And uh, right now, Chiron has a virtual monopoly there. So... Um, this is something that, that is going to help them a lot moving forward. So we've been trying to chat about a new company every week. So how does Lexaria Bioscience relate to the cannabis industry and how does it fold into your model portfolio? Well, Le Lexaria has a wonderful technology called Dehydratech. And, and what that does is it increases the uh, bioavailability of um, oil-based, oil-soluble uh, drugs uh, into the system. So THC and CBD, for example, um, d get delivered faster into your system using this technology. I mean, the reason people smoke is the fastest way to get it into your system is by breathing the uh, uh, smoke into your lungs and, and having it enter your bloodstream there. Uh, but this, this new technology um, really helps in terms of uh, getting cannabis delivered uh, in edibles um, and so on. And so I, I think there's tremendous potential. Um, that's how I got involved with it from a cannabis point of view. But we always knew that this technology also worked on other drugs, such as nicotine. And of course, the tobacco companies right now are looking for 
ways to deliver nicotine into your system um, without having to smoke it because uh, it's the smoking part that, that really uh, does health damage. Um, and so again, um, uh, Lexaria has an opportunity uh, in that area. And, and beyond that, they're doing work now on um, uh, drugs, uh, HIV uh, drugs. Um, they're doing some exper experimental work on uh, the oral delivery. So um, if you um, take a pill or uh, some other form of oral delivery, uh, then this will help too. I mean, that's the reason uh, you, you get shots is because it delivers more of this of the drug to your system. Uh, whereas if you consume it, um, then your body has natural ways to, uh, to take a lot of that impact out. Um, so Lexaria right now is in the process of uplisting uh, probably to the NASDAQ in the United States. Um, and that process will probably be done very early in, uh, in the new year. And when that happens, I think um, it will uh, expose them to a much larger number of investors. And uh, I think the stock will do very well. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, no, that, that's about it. I mean, I, I think uh, right now we're, uh, we're going through a little bit of tax loss selling. Uh, in the markets. Um, and so there may be a, a little bit of pressure on stock prices until uh, between Christmas and New Year's. And uh, historically, we get what people call the Santa Claus rally or the year end rally uh, and stock prices move up. Um, and so I, th I think we're in that process now. Um, and particularly in the Canadian cannabis stocks where uh, there are lots of losses to be realized. So um, I, I think that's kind of the pattern that I see between now and early 2021. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you like the content, and I'll see you again soon.